cut from this side in. This way I have the most amount of surface uh, base where it's solid. And I usually just sort of drop the knife for the little, little whoosh, so it gets in there. And then yeah, just cut. Now I will tell you that I have a cat that absolutely loves watermelon. And so this little piece here that doesn't have a whole lot of meat on it, I generally score up a little bit and I put on the floor so she can lick that and allow me to cut up my watermelon in peace. So there's our first slice. And these slices I'd say are about, I don't know, maybe an inch, inch and a half. I, uh, I generally tend to favor my watermelon chunks a little bit thicker. So, but that is of course a uh, personal preference. Take the second half, go right into it. That one's a little bit deep there, so it's actually some meat on that end piece, which will give us some, some uh, bit of fun afterwards. And there we go. Oh. Now if you get your cuts nice and straight and uniform, you do manage to get a number of slices that are just beautiful and, and ready to go like this. Ah, oh, joy, joy. So, we've got our circles of watermelon, and then to make this ready to eat, we just cut around, carefully of course, watching your fingers, and you cut off the ends like that. Take your little rinds. Now if you want, you can actually pickle these. Uh, I have had watermelon, uh, pickled watermelon rinds as a child, and uh, I've recently been told this is uh, an Armenian delicacy. Um, I've never pickled it myself, but you know that right there? Sure, it's not that tasty, so it must be healthy. Um, so here's our center cut of watermelon. Look at that, beautiful. My favorite part of the watermelon cutting is that first piece. The first piece that's actually a piece, not the first piece where you eat the rind for no particular reason. So we cut this into squares. Ah, and the first piece, right there in the middle. This is this is watermelon core here. This is this is watermelon heaven. And for the first watermelon season, it's not half bad. It is uh, it is crispy. Feels a little underripe. Perhaps could have sat on the ground for another week and a half or so. Um, but it's juicy. Has a little bit of a twang. Underripe watermelons generally have a little twang. If I knew something, I'd probably say that's you know a high pH level or or a low low you know lycopene level or something like that but uh, if I would actually say that I'd just be making crap up because I don't really know anything about uh, the watermelons other than they're very yummy they're very yummy and uh, actually I will say I do know that they have uh, they do have a high level of lycopene in them which uh, which is good for the prostate so um, all you fellas out there who want to keep your prostate good and healthy, eat lots of watermelon in the summer, and, uh, and uh, you know, then you can perhaps compete in, uh, you know, some international prostate games or something like that. I'll be honest with you, I really don't know what the heck a prostate is, uh, either. I know, uh, I know I got one, and, uh, I gotta care for it, and, I don't know, do stuff with it. Be, be careful with it. Perhaps uh, after checking out this video, you can go to the uh, you know the American Prostate Institute or whatever that is, and see what they can tell you about uh, maintaining good prostate health and, and watermelon. And uh, you know, as I as I cut this up, as you can see, I'm about halfway done, and that that right there is almost full. I can't help but want to eat some of that. Um, while I cut this up, my cat is down by my feet. She kind of starts eating at the watermelon and then uh, just start walking around my feet again. I don't really know why. She kind of goes crazy. She gets into some sort of 
I guess you'd call it some sort of like watermelon bliss state where she just she just goes uh, she gets uh, what's the word bliss is a good word for it I guess maybe you could call it ecstasy some sort of like watermelon ecstasy we'll call it water watermelon ecstasy you could call it that if you want to or really whatever you want now I will say that having a big uh, cutting board is nice. I imagine a time when I've got a you know a big like five foot counter space and I can just sort of fling the watermelon rinds off to the side as I cut. You know that does slow down the watermelon cutting process, which in turn slows down the watermelon eating process, which I find um, you know anything really that gets in the way of you know enjoying the watermelon I find to be Quite frankly, I find it to be uh, a nuisance. Um, that's one of the one of the reasons why the uh, the seeds I don't particularly care for. I mean, hey, you know, I understand watermelon needs to reproduce, have its babies, do its watermelon things with other watermelons. But but hey, you know, we're on this earth to to eat eat watermelon, right, Don? Right? Okay, she uh, she doesn't necessarily agree with that. But uh, that's okay, you know. Not everybody, not everybody's, uh, you know, a big fan of watermelon. I understand that. Some people like, uh, some people like soup. You know, I've actually recently read an article about soup. Turns out that soup was invented by the guy that invented water. Um, he uh, he met a guy. He met a guy that was uh, in the fire industry, fire trade, and uh, he got together and. They were talking one day, and he was walking around. He was actually walking around with gazpacho, and he uh, he tripped, tripped and fell. He was at his friend's house, this fire guy. He fell and he dropped his uh, dropped his bottle of gazpacho on fire. And uh, you know, before they could get that gazpacho out, uh, it, it heated up. It got pretty pretty hot actually. It started to steam. That gazpacho did, and they got it out. And they thought the whole batch actually went bad. Turns out they tried it out and it was pretty darn good. So, uh, so that's that's how the soup was invented. And uh, I don't remember where I read that, but it was somewhere. And uh, so now you can see I've uh, I've worked my way through that that watermelon in short time. Throw this uh, cutting board in the in the uh, sink there. Give that a good rinse. Here's our watermelon. Um, our trash. See, we're ready to go. This is right here. This trash, you just tie it up and throw that right outside in recycling. Um, I think that's maybe how they make new watermelon, some seedless watermelon, they recycle it. And uh, give that a quick rinse, wipe down, do the knife, and uh, there you go. We spent about, I don't know, what was that, a couple minutes? Doing a nice chat and enjoying some watermelon uh, cutting. And uh, basically what that leaves us with is, uh, is this moment right here. This is the moment of, uh, of bliss. Um, my favorite, my preferred way uh, of eating watermelon, I wouldn't say my favorite way, basically any time I'm eating watermelon is my favorite way, but uh, my preferred method is to use chopsticks. And uh, it's nice when you have these little bite-sized pieces because you can just sort of bring them up to your mouth. And uh, if you put this in the fridge, let's say you're not sharing your watermelon, which, uh, I mean, I'm all for sharing. I like my friends, but um, perhaps uh, watermelon is best kept... Uh, to oneself, um, if, so you keep this in the fridge. Just keep your uh, your chopsticks in there, and then in the middle of the night, when you're thirsty, instead of grabbing a, a cold beverage, you can just pull off the saran wrap and and go for your uh, your watermelon. That's good. That's some good stuff. This right here, maybe two days of watermelon, and, uh, and then we start all over again, back to the beginning. Hope you enjoyed uh, my video, the uber goodest way to cut up a watermelon, and uh, I hope to see you at a picnic. Bring your own watermelon. Next question correctly. What is your favorite color?